This screencast is looking at 2.2.14, um, explain maximal oxygen consumption. 2.2.15, discuss the variability of maximal oxygen consumption in selected groups. And 2.2.16, discuss the variability of maximal oxygen consumption with different modes of exercise. I think before we start looking at VO2 max, um, it's important to understand that sometimes you'll be referred to VO2. Now this equals the volume of oxygen consumption. Now that doesn't mean that it's going to be VO2 max. It is simply the amount of oxygen that is being delivered to and used per minute. So at rest you still use oxygen. So you still have a VO2 at rest. It's just not going to be VO2 max. So there is a difference between the two. VO2 max is the maximum amount of oxygen that can be utilised per minute, whereas VO2 is simply the volume of oxygen that you are using per minute. So here we go. Oxygen consumption, which I've just said, VO2, is the amount of oxygen taken up and used by the body. As a result of aerobic training for a given workload, oxygen consumption is the same or slightly lower at rest and during submaximal exercise. The mechanisms responsible, however, do change. Stroke volume increases, heart rate decreases. So this is as a result of aerobic training where stroke volume has increased, both at rest and submaximal workloads. The greater the amount of blood ejected with each beat means that the oxygen required of the activity are being met with more efficiency. Hence, heart rate can decrease because our stroke volume has increased. VO2 max has been shown to increase with aerobic training. Improvements of 5 to 20% can be achieved with 8 to 12 weeks of aerobic training. And now that's obviously making sure that the training principles that are used are applied appropriately. So how can we calculate VO2 max? VO2 max equals stroke volume times heart rate times a VO2 difference. The change in VO2 max is a result of a number of changes. An increase in oxygen delivery to working muscles, an increase in the ability of the muscles to extract oxygen from the blood, so that's a VO2 difference, and then increase in cardiac output. Now that results from our heart rate and stroke volume, maximal intensities being able to increase. Increase again, AVO2 difference as a result within changes of the muscle. Oxygen extraction approaches maximum during high intense activity. So that's where we're looking at um, within AVO2 difference of the arterial oxygen concentration being either 20 or 19, depending on the text that you're using, milliliters of oxygen per 100 ml of blood, and the venule concentration being um, as low as 2 milliliters of oxygen, uh, meaning that upwards of or up to 17, 18 millilitres of oxygen um, is actually being used.
Now with oxygen uptake at maximal activity. So maybe I can really looking here at VO2 max increases significantly. VO2 max increases due to increase in cardiac output, as I've said, minute ventilation. That wasn't mentioned earlier. Now, if you are breathing more deeply, more often, then you're actually going to be getting more oxygen into your system. So more oxygen can be picked up by um, the blood. AVO2 difference. Capillarization. So if we have capillaries or more capillaries forming around our lungs, more capillaries forming around our muscles, then there's greater surface area there for gaseous exchange to occur. Increased number of red, red blood cells in our blood, so more oxygen can be picked up at the alveoli. Lung diffusion, um, increased surface area, gain from the capillarization, and also as you are, or if you become more able to breathe in more deeply as the alveoli can expand further, um, that increases surface area there as well. So all of these factors allow athletes to utilise more oxygen. And don't forget, we're referring to using more oxygen per minute. We'll look at this sentence down here um, later when we look at energy systems. So this graph is looking at how our body after exercise is able to utilize oxygen more readily at the beginning of exercise than if we had not undergone training. So the after training, no difference at rest, but here it's a much steeper rise. Um, actually, we will go back and have a very, very quick chat about here. If we put a line through here, that would pretty much represent oxygen demand for the activity. Now, before training, it's taken us that little while to get up to our demand. So we have a shortfall. That shortfall being here, which is referred to as oxygen deficit, the energy that would be required to work at the given intensity, um, that energy comes from our anaerobic energy system, so our anaerobic glycolysis and ATP-CP energy systems. Now because after training we can achieve that more quickly, there's a lesser reliance on the anaerobic systems. Now our anaerobic systems, the metabolic byproducts of those systems are fatiguing. So hydrogen ions build up of inorganic phosphate. So here are some norms. So now when we're starting to look at comparisons of VO2 maxes, here we can see we have age that we can look at, males and females, and then we've also got um, a range for particular sports and those particular sports. Continue down there. So if we look at this bit here, which the first one may just slightly contradict age. But here, 10 to 19, males have a average VO2 max of 47 to 56, 20 to 29, 43 to 52. Now where I said it slightly contradicts, is that VO2 max will continue, or relative VO2 max will continue to increase 
as you grow and mature. So for most males, that's going to be early 20s. For females, it's more likely to be late teens. So because we've got a, quite a large age bracket here, it doesn't quite show that it's more likely to be in our early 20s that it's at its highest. It does work for the females in that late teens is the highest. And from that point on, it decreases by around about 1% per year. Looking across as males versus females, males tend to have a higher VO2 max, females a lower VO2 max. And as much as anything, if we're looking at absolute VO2 max, it's mainly to do with males having larger bodies, obviously, in general. Um, however, still when we're looking at it relative VO2 max, so with kilograms in the equation, males still do have a greater VO2 max than females. I'm just going to bring it down so you can see all of the sports. So again, age, males, females. You may want to pause that and have a look at some of the values there. Now the last thing that we look at Just a reminder that volume of oxygen versus VO2 max, where VO2 represents oxygen consumption, so the amount of oxygen being consumed per minute, measured in litres per minute. Now we've broken up VO2 max into absolute and relative. So absolute VO2 max represents oxygen consumption still. It's the maximum amount of oxygen being consumed per minute, and it's measured in litres per minute. So it, it is actually the amount of oxygen that you use maximally per minute. Our relative VO2 max represents oxygen consumption per kilogram. So it's the maximum amount of oxygen being consumed per minute per kilogram and is measured in millilitres per kilogram per minute. So relative VO2 max allows us to compare aerobic fitness between athletes. So we can compare a male to a female. We can compare a hockey player to a soccer player. It takes into account body size. Now, some other general rules that did mention, or some did mention earlier in the table. Females tend to have a lower VO2 max than males. Now, this is to do with the same age and fitness, and again, primarily due to physical size. Age does affect absolute VO2 max. I might have said relative earlier, but age does affect absolute VO2 max. Increases with age, matching patterns of growth and maturation. So as you get older, up until you reach physical maturity, it will increase, might plateau very slightly, and then will decrease at the rate of about 1%. Per year. Females peak in late teens, males in early 20s. This decrease tends to mainly come from, as we age, a decrease in heart rate. Now the type of exercise does limit 
the individual's highest recorded VO2 max. So if more mass is being used in the exercise itself, so your weight bearing, required use of postural muscles, etc., then the maximum amount of oxygen that you will use for that activity, if you're working maximally, will be higher because more muscle groups are being used, therefore more oxygen will be required to be used. So if we go down this path, cross-country skiing would have a greater VO2 max than running because our arms are also working against resistance. This would have, running, would have a greater VO2 max than cycling because our upper body is being used. Running is more of a weight-bearing activity than cycling. And cycling would have a greater VO2 max than an arm ergometer because the lower body is not being used, the muscle groups are smaller, etc.